Oh, today's afternoon is, is getting the app test test I am getting 16. We're going to start on the bottom of test vav on the base, where the Gemara is discussing the mixing and matching of different halachic tools and whether or not it's problematic. So on today's daf yomi, Elfa asked the following question: By Elfa. Elfa was himself a person who lived between two worlds because he was in the yeshiva world and he left for the business world. And he asked the question about mixing and matching. Here he says, Yadayim tohoros l'chatsayin. Can you purify your hands halfway? So, O'ain tohoros l'chatsayin. Or can you not purify your hands halfway? So Gemara says, what's this question? Hechi dummy, what's this scenario? You ima. Do you want to say that the question is to come wash obey tray miravias, that you want to wash two hands? from one revius of water. You have only revius and you wanna wash both your hands from, from that. But to nine, it can't be that that's the question because we learned in the Mishnah in Yadayim that the Mishnah tells us me revius no plenum Yadayim. That from one revius of water, you wash your hands, one hand and even two hands. So it can't be that that's the question because it's explicit Mishnah. Maybe he's asking, can you wash your hands one at a time? Can't be that that's the question. Ratanan, because we learned in the Mishnah and Yadayim, the Mishnah tells us, achas achas b'shtifa yadav if, you want, if you wash your hands, one by a jug, by a cup, and the other one by immersing it in the river, it's okay. So clearly you, you don't have to wash your hands together. Oh, the kamashi palga palga the day. So you wash your hands half at a time. You wash your hand, then dry it, and then wash the other half of the hand. Is that the question? It can't be. Didn't Rabbiana answer that question? That you can't wash your hands in this manner. No, says, Rabbiana was saying you can't wash it if the hand became completely dry, and then you wash the other half of the hand. We're talking about a case where there's still moisture on the hand. That's what Elf was asking about. Mar says, but so what? Still, even if there's moisture on the hand, it still shouldn't work. Because we learned in the Mishnah in Taharos, a nitzok, nitzok is a stream of liquid that's being poured from one utensil down to the bottom utensil. And the bottom utensil is, the, the liquid in the bottom utensil is tamay, a katapras, a similar situation. But here we're talking about a water running down a mountain an embankment on over a board and there's water at the bottom which is tamay whether it makes the water at the top tamay umash ketofech or if there's liquid that's that's moisture that's like damp on your hand ain't no keyboard it's not going to be connected it's not going to be connected not to make something tamay like the scenarios we talked about and and not to make something tahor so it's not going to make something tamay if the bottom liquid is tamay, or not. it's not going to make something tahor. So wouldn't that be the case that you can't purify your hands in this manner? So the Gemara says, no, So no, we're talking about a case that when it says here, well, with tahara, Rashi says, what we're talking about mikvos, if, with respect to mikvah, that if you have two mikvos and neither one of them has the 40 saw requirement, and then there's this liquid coming down or tofeach, uh, then it's not going to be uh, enough to connect them. So, so we see that, but anyway, we see from here, the Gemara assumes that it's the same law with respect to mikvahs as to washing one's hands. And that just that it's damp is not going to be sufficient. So the Gemara says, no, we're not talking about pure dampness. We're talking about that, what we're talking about here is that that there's enough water remaining on the hand, it's so moist that you can uh, move the water from one hand all the way to another hand. So that's more than just plain dampness. It's really a lot of water that you could sprinkle onto the other aspect. So the, the Raj says, you could push it and make it moist in another place. Mara says, but this is also what we learned. This itself, was also learned in a brisa tofech atfiach chibur, and if it's so moist that it is going to serve a connection. So the Gemara says, yeah, but that maybe was delmo eni mikvos Rabbi Yehudi. Maybe that's only a connection with respect to mikvah, but not with respect to washing hands. And maybe that's only the position of Rabbi Yehuda. 
And as we learned, the Tanan mikvah sheyesh bo arbam. So let's say you have a mikvah which is exactly 40 so, which is the amount that's required to have a mikvah. And it's mikuvanos, it's exactly 40 so. The yardu shnaim tavu. And both hands went into the mikvah. Both people went into the mikvah, one after the other. So if they, so, so we're going to say, Rishon Tar, the first person who goes in is Tar, because when he goes into the mikvah, it's exactly 40 sa. So it's okay. But when the first person comes out, he takes water with him. So therefore, there's less than 40 sa. The second person will be Tamei, because there's less than 40 sa. No, uh, Rabbi Huda Omer, Rabbi Huda says, if the, if the legs of the first one are still connected to the mikvah, then the second one will be Tahor, because it's as though it's connected, because we're going to say that it's the principle of good aches, that, that the water is, is on his body is assumed to be connected by ascent, descending, it's connected on some level to the, to the water in the mikvah. And so therefore, we're saying that when we said in the Braise, Tofecha Atfiach is a chibor, maybe that's only following Rabbi Yehuda's position and, and by mikvos. But, but Ilfa was asking about washing one's hands in general, whether or not we're going to say the two halves are connected. And Ilfa's question is not answered by the Gemara. So Amar Rabbi Yermia, the Gemara says, hold on one second. Right, so Ilfa's question was not answered. And so therefore the Ramam rules that if there's water, if, if there is a, one of the, a little bit of the hand water, then, and it's tofech manas latfiach, that it does work according to the Ramam. So the case of Mishnah writes that even though the Gemara here uh, pushes it off and says the Bryce is talking about mikvos and Shabbi Huda, nevertheless, the Ramam rules lean because the, the Gemara just was trying to push it off, but it, and also it's a suffix to Rabbanan, and we rule leniently. However, the tour writes that we can't do it that way. And the, the tour says it's not okay. The Shulchan Aruch rules like the Raman to be lenient, and the Magen Avram writes that this law was only said by the Yevet, but you're not allowed to wash your hands in this in this manner. So, okay, so they're still arguing over Ilfa's question all these years later. So, I'm a Rabbi Yermia. So, Rabbi Yermia raised the following question: Harei Amru Haba Haba Roshel Garubu B'Mayim Shuven. So, let's say we're talking about the following case. Let's say a person who had just gone to the mikvah. And he's tahor, but then he puts the majority of his body into what's called mayim shuuvin. This is water which was drawn water, which is disqualified for a mikvah. Or a situation the tahor shenafu al rosh v'rubo shalugin mayim shuuvin. Or if you have a person who is tahor, and and then what happened was water fell upon him, which was mayim shuuvin, which was drawn water. We're going to say he's tamei. He cannot eat the truma until he immerses in the mikvah. What's the reason? This is part of a gezera of, of 18 gezeros that were made in the time of Ezra. And the Gemara discusses them in the first chapter of Masecha Shabbos. And they explain the reason for this gezera, because it used to be that their mikvahs were not as beautiful uh, as, as hygienic as our mikvahs today. And they used to go in these caves that were putrid, and so therefore they want to wash off their bodies after they did, after they went to these caves. And so they would go into this drawn water. And then people started to say, oh, the mikvah doesn't purify you. It's the drawn water that purifies you. And so therefore the rabbis made a decree and that you can't go, that you can't go into the drawn water after you go into the mikvah, you become tamay. And then they made another decree that if the water falls upon you, this drawn water, that you're also tamay. Because if you're not going to have that gazera, you won't, people won't take the first gazera or realize what the first gazera is about. So in both these cases, you're going to become tamay. So this is all the setup for the question. So by Rabbi Yermia, so Rabbi Yermia asked the question, so let's say, let's say you're in the mikvah, half of your body is in the drawn water, and half of it fell upon your top. So under those circumstances, are you going to become Tamei? So the Atar person, after he went to the mikvah, he went half of his body into a utensil with drawn water, and half of it fell on him. What's the law? Do we say also in this case, the, the Gezer of the Rabbanon applies? The rabbis say, Teku. So we leave this question unresolved.
So Amr of Papa, Hare Amru, Papa says the next case. We have the case of a Balkori Chola, Shinasno of Tisha Kab and Mayim Tahor. So we have a general principle that if you have a man who has an emission, a seminal emission from his body, and he's sick, then he just has to pour upon himself nine coven of water in order to be purified. What's the background for this law? So Rashi explains that this is in order to study Torah, that Ezra instituted immersion in the mikvah for men who have what's called keri before they study Torah. But yet the rabbis were weaned on a sick person that all he has to do is it, not all, but what he has to do is he doesn't have to go to the mikvah. It'd be too hard for him to go to the mikvah. So he just has to put nine coven of water upon him. And that could be even like drawn water. So if a person wants to study Torah today after he has an admission, he, he, he needs to take a shower. Avolataro, Rashi says, about to actually enter into the temple that he needs to immerse in a mikvah. So now the question of Papa asks is, benesina mai. So now let's say half of his body went into the mikvah and the other half of his body, they poured Mayim Shuvan on it. Is that going to be sufficient? And there too, the Gemara leaves the question unresolved and the Gemara says, take it, we'll leave this question unresolved. So, Amor of Shmuel Bar Yehuda, Amor of Yochanan. Well, so we, we go back to now to the last line of the Mishnah. We go back to the Mishnah and now we go back to Masech Eskitin. Let's say one person said the funny enough. The one agent brought it, he said it was signed. It was written for me. The other one says it was signed for me. So under those circumstances, the Mishnah rules it's possible. It's disqualified. Excuse me. So the Gemara says, Amr of Shmuel Bar Yehud, Amr of Yochanan, Moshana, when do we say that our Mishnah rules that that this get is disqualified when one of the witnesses says it was written before me, the other one says it was signed before me. Only when both of them are not appointed agents to bring the get. Be, meaning to say, be, that's the case. When both of them were not agents, when only one of them was appointed an agent. And therefore, the one who's bringing it has to say, and he didn't say it. He didn't say it properly. But let's say the get was, both of them were appointed the agents to bring the get, and one says it was written before me, and the other one says it was signed before me, and under these prince, under this circumstance, Rabbi Yochanan says it was kosher. So we're on top of 16b. We see from here, so we see from here that if two people bring this get from overseas, then if two people bring the get from overseas, we don't require both of them to say, we don't require, we see from here, even though in this case of Rabbi Yochanan, we're only one Sebefana Nechtam and one Sebefana Nechtam, it's okay, because both of them were appointed as agents. So we see from here, it must be the Rabbi Yochanan's position that if two people bring the get from overseas, that they don't need to say because what's the reason why the sages say you have to say uh, uh, is because only we don't have, well, it's because according to Rava, we don't have witnesses to uh, certify that our sages is going according to Rava. We need to do what's called Kiyom Shtaros. And so here, if, the, if since there are two people bringing it, then the, the two people who bring it are going to support it. And so therefore, Rabbi Yochanan says that when two people bring it, even though they didn't say funny nechum, funny nechum, that we have the Edim Mitzuyim with Kaimo. And so therefore we, we have the Edim to certify. We have the witness to certify it. And so therefore we don't need to say funny nechum, funny nechum. So that's what Rabbi Yochanan is saying. So Amoy Abai, Abai argues, he says, so Abai, so Rabbi Shum Bar Yehuda cited this halacha in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. So Abai says to him, El Me'ata Seifa, what about the next line in the Mishnah, which states, if two people say it was written before me, and one says it was signed before me, it's possible, it's this, it's disqualified. Rabbi Yehuda Yehuda says it's okay. And this Rashi points out, this must obviously be talking about a case where both of them were not the agents, because if both of them were the agents, then if both of them were the agents, then the Rabbanon would say it's kosher uh, because, because we just said that two people bring a get don't need to say anything. 
So what, the next clause of Mishra, it says, Shnayim al Rufanim Nechta, Ve'echad al Rufanim Nechta. It's possible, Rabbi Huda Machshir, but why would Rabbi Huda say that it's disqualified? Why would the Chum say it's disqualified according to Rabbi Yochanan if two people are bringing the get? So, Taima, what's the reason? De'ina get Yotzeh Mitachas Yedei Shnayim. What's the reason that the Chum and, and Rabbi Huda are, are disqualifying the get? Because because the two people who say before Nechta were not record, were called the agents to bring the get. And the only one who was called an agent was the was the one who says it was signed before me, and he doesn't say it was written before me. I get But this implies that if both of them were pointed to the agents, Ma'afshri Rabbana and the Chum say it's okay, even though they didn't say it before them, because they'd be able to certify it. Am I in? So so the Gemara says, well, so Abai clarifies, but he ain't get Yotze Mitachas Yedeshneim. But my pligi, well, if both of them are not appointed to be the agents, why does Rabbi Huda say the get is kosher? One, the only the only one agent was appointed, and he didn't say funny nachtam, funny nachtam. So Mar Sever, so the chummer of the opinion that even though, so if we're talking about this case that both of them were not appointed to be the agent, so why does Rabbi Huda say it's kosher in that case? So the Gemara says, Mar Savar, guys, read on that, that the Chavim say that even though the sages believe the Shliach, nevertheless, the Chavim say we're going to disqualify the get. Because we might come to switch it in general with certification of Gitan in general with one witness. So that we, we, if we accept it here in this case with one witness, then we might accept it also in other cases, it came to us in general. Umar Savar, whereas Rabbi Yehud is of the position who says to get his kosher one, two say before they nechtam, one says before they even though both of them are not certifying the, even though the get is not, even both of them, even though both of them are not pointed to the agent, Savar look us reading, he says, we're not going to be concerned Maybe we'll be lean other shtaros because everybody sees that we need two other witnesses to say that the get was written in front of us. And we're not going to switch it with Kirim Shtaros in general. That's the first sheet, uh, the first lashon of the Gemara and how we understand what, what Rabbi Yochanan said as Tobar Rashmo Bar Yehuda. But the Gemara says, Lishna Achrina Amri Lehi. So the Gemara has another lashon, a different expression. Amar Rashmo Bar Yehuda, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Now Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yehuda taught in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Afil get Yotzi Mitachas Yedeshneim. Possible. If one says before nechtav, that what was the case exactly? And one says before nechtav, and one says before nechtav. Even if both of them were appointed to be the agents, we're still going to disqualify it. Alma kasavar shnayim shavu get me medina sayam. So we see that from here that even if two people bring the get from overseas, we require both of them to say it was written and signed before us. Because, and since they didn't say it exactly like the Chachamim, and they only testified about the signature, and only one testified about the signature, if we're going to allow this get, we might come to confuse with Kim Shtaris in general. So it says, Abaye, Seifa, the Katani, the concluding clause, which states, Shnaim Omer Mufaneno Nechta, Echad Omer Mufaneno Nechta, and if two people say it was written in front of us and one person say it was signed, we're going to say it's possible, and Rabbi Yehuda Machshir, I feel get yotze mitachas yedei shneim. Even if both of them bring the get, possibly rabbanon, the rabbis would disqualify it in that case. Even if the get would come out from both of them, the rabbis would, would disqualify. I'm in. Yes, that that the, that would be the case. So, but Michael, okay, what's the nature of their argument there? Mar sarofisha in bekin l'shma. So the Chachamim are saying that the reason why the Chachamim, that the Chachamim of the Mishnah require you to say funny nachtam, funny nachtam, is because the people outside of Eretz Yisrael, they're not experts in Lashma. And so therefore, even though two people bring the get, they need to say funny nachtam, funny nachtam to prove Lashma. Whereas Rabbi Huda says, kosher, it's because we need to certify it. And so therefore, and so therefore, if two people bring the get, we don't require you to say funny nachtam, funny nachtam. So Lema the Rabba the Rabba tonight. So maybe this dispute, Rabba and Rabba, about whether it's Lishma, that which is what Rabba says, or if it is Adam and and Kama, which is what Rabba says, maybe it's just a machokas tanaim. And Rabba who says it's Lishma, he holds like the Chamim in our Mishnah, who says that even though 
two people bring it, they need to require it. And Rabbo says that in the Mitzuyan Kaimo, he holds like Rabbi Yehudo says that they don't need to say, uh, that they won't need to say it under those circumstances. So Ingmar says, no. Rabbi Mitaras, Rabbi Mitaras, Rabbi says, I follow Rabbi Yochanan's read, the first Lashon, which says that the whole Machokas is about, the whole Suya is about whether or not Eidim Mitzuyan Kaimo and the Chacham and Morawe. And, and, and so therefore, that, and so that's the first lashon of, of what Rabbi Yochanan brought. According to this, that the, the, the Mishnah is talking about a case where, they, where it's not two people who bring the get. And therefore, we require the sheikh to say funny nothing, funny nothing, because both of them weren't appointed to bring it. Whereas Rabbi Yehuda says that in this case, we don't require him because since the husband will challenge it, the both of them can testify against him. But in the case where the husband appoints two agents, Everybody would agree, even the Chachamim would agree, says Rabbi, that you don't need to say it. The Rabbi, and Rabbi would respond, the Kuli Amo, but you know, Hashma. He'd say, No, everybody requires Hashma, both the first, both Chachamim and Rabbi Huda. And what's our Mishra talking about? We're talking about a case after they learned the Allah of Hashma. And they're arguing about whether or not we would return the initial. Initial decree after they learned it back to its original state. The Marasar, the Chum say we're going to disqualify the get. You always need to say funny Nachtav because maybe they'll go back to its original state. Or Rabbi Huda says, Marasar will go as we know So the Gemara says, Wifo Gnami Rabbi Huda Beresha. Why doesn't Rabbi Huda also argue in the first case of the Mishnah when one says Bafana Nachtav and one says Bafana Nachtam and make the get kosher? Because since the get comes out of both of them, there's no concern. That they're going to learn from your Takim stars in general. So Gemara says, "In Marla, Amar Ula Cholkei Rabbi Yehuda Perushim." Indeed, Rabbi Yehuda also argued in the first case. That's how Ula taught it. Masa Rabbi Shai Ula. So Rabbi Shai challenges this statement of Ula. Is it really the case that he also argues in the first case? But Rabbi Yehuda Machshir Bezuvu about Cheres. But we learn we have a statement in the price. Rabbi Yehuda argues in this case and not the other case. My love will mute. Isn't it saying Rabbi Yehuda does not argue in the case of Echad Omer Fani Nachtav? Echad Omer Fani Nachtam doesn't mean that Rabbi Yehuda is not arguing in the first case where one witness says it was written and the other witness says it was, or one agent says it was written and the other one says it was signed in front of me. I said no, will mute. It's to exclude a different case. The Fani Nachtam of a little Fani Nachtav, where where the agent says it was signed before me, but it was not written before me. And in this case, Rabbi Yehuda disqualifies the get. And that's why he says he argues in this and not in that. I mean, in that case, Rabbi Yehuda also disqualifies it. I mean, he might have thought, whole of all goes to Rabbi Yehuda, that since Rabbi Yehuda doesn't make the decree, and he says it's kosher, even when two people bring it, and he, does, he, and he doesn't require them to say, Fani Nachtam, Fani Nachtam, Mizeh Hashem Yafsar Devar Kulo. He doesn't make the decree that we have to be concerned that maybe the zero will go back to its original state. We're requiring Lashma, Doma Asi, so too. So maybe even if one brings it, he doesn't make this decree that maybe it'll go, that will confuse it with Kiyom Shtaris in general. Therefore, Kamash wants, so therefore the price is teaching us that Rabbi Yehuda is concerned about that. And so he is concerned that if one agent brings it, one agent has to say both B'fanei Nechtav and B'fanei Nechtam, because otherwise we're going to allow it by Kiyom Shtaris in general we'll switch it. So now the Gemara says, in Marnami, indeed we learned this in Ebraisa, or in a memra, like the Lishna of Basra, Amra Yehuda Shnaim Shaviu Gem in Medina Sayam, Bana Wal Machokas Rabihud Rabban. If two people bring the get from Medina Sayam, that's a dispute between Rabbi Huda and the Rabban. According to Rabban, it, it is going to be disqualified because we have this uh, concern that maybe well Xer Shami Yahsa Dabra local cool. And we need them to say before enough them, funny enough them. And according to Rabbi Huda, it's kosher. So we see there Rabbi Yehuda follow, follows. That the the Lishna Brisa that because if it would have been that Rabbi Yehuda was following the Lishna Kama, then it would have been had to be kosher both according to Rabbanu and to Rabbi Yehuda because the get was coming out from both of them. Both of them were bringing it. So now, Rabbi Barachana Chalosh and Mar tells us is sick. Rabbi Barachana was sick. Olegabe Rabbi Yehuda Virabba. So Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi came up to visit him. He was sick, so they came up to talk to her with him. So they asked him the question. 
שניים שהביאו גט ממדינס היה, אם two people bring a gat from overseas, צריכים שיהיו אומרים בפנינו, בפני נחתם, בפני נחתם, או אין צריכים. Do we require them to say בפני נחתם, בפני נחתם, or not? We saw that, we seen that according to the, that we, this is what we've been discussing. So, so Amalam ain't tzrichen. So he says they don't need to say fun enough, fun enough them because it must be that we're not worried about the gzera shami after davar l'kukulo. We're not worried that it's going to go back to its uh, its initial state, or or else we could say that we're talking about a case where they were both appointed shlichem. So my so and what's his reasoning? His reasoning is my ilu yomer b'faneno girsha. If these witnesses testify that they, that they were that they gave their husband the get, they wouldn't we believe them? So therefore, since if they testify that the get was given, we would believe them for sure. In this case, we're going to believe them. In the meantime, a Persian came and shuckle a shirk. We took the, we're on top of 17a, he took the light from in front of them. So, so at that point, Rabbi Baruchana said, the following, Rabbi Barakana said, Rahmana, O Betulcha, O Betula, the Bar Asaf. He said, I can't handle these Persians. Why are these Persians taking it? Because Rashi says that they have one, they have a holiday that they don't light any flames in, in their house that day. They only light it in their idolatry. So all the fires have to be in, the, in their temples and not in people's homes. So they took the flame, which they were using to study Torah. So he's so. Rabbi Arachana said, Hashem, give us your shade or give us a shade of the Bar Esav. But we can't handle these Persians. Umar says, He means to say the Romans are better than the Persians. And what does that mean? That God knows his, his ways and he knows its place. God knew that we wouldn't be able to handle the decrees of the per, of the Romans, so he stood and he exiled us to Babylon. So we see from here that the Persians are better than the Romans. Romans before these Chavrim, these were these very, very difficult Persians. They used to be better, but once they came, they were worse than the Romans. And it's a powerful Gemara that the, the Gemara is hinting to the fact that God knows our ways. God, God knows the ways of the world. God knows the path. If God sent us into our exile, we think that's the worst decree, but it could have been so much worse. <laughs> we don't even realize. And that's what the Gemara is teaching us here. Okay, we'll stop here and uh, God will pick this up. We'll continue. <laughs>